In this lesson, we examine the bandwidth provided with plain, ordinary telephone service, which is often referred to as the voice band. We'll understand what the term bandwidth means and how it's measured in the analog world. We'll look at the details of the voice band, what frequencies it covers and why, and its limitations. If a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, does it cause a sound? The answer depends on whether you believe sound is sound pressure waves, air molecules getting closer together than further apart, or if you believe sound is the sensation one gets in one's brain when one hears the sound pressure waves. Then, the two points of view when designing the telephone system would be, at the receiver, reproduce the sound pressure waves exactly the same as they are at the transmitter, or reproduce the sensation in the listener's brain just as if they had been speaking directly to the talker. The difference between these two ideas is that the brain is a hugely complicated processing instrument and we can play different stimuli at it and get the same response. What choice did Alexander Graham Bell make? What choice did Alexander Graham Bell make? Answer number two. Based on testing human beings' ears, throats, and brains, and some technical limitations at the time, A.G. Bell decided to transmit all of the information in the frequency range from about 300 to 3300 Hz. Hertz is the units for frequency, or changes per second. This range, or band of frequencies, is called the voice band. The diagram is a representation of the voice band, with frequency on the horizontal axis and amplitude or intensity on the vertical axis. This figure shows that any electricity vibrating at least 300 times a second, and less often than 3300 times a second, will be passed, indicated by a 1. Any electricity vibrating less often than 300 times a second will be suppressed, indicated by a 0. Similarly, any electricity vibrating more than 3300 times a second will be suppressed. Only electricity vibrating within the band from 300 to 3300 Hz will be transmitted. And by the way, those ones and zeros have nothing to do with digital. It just means either it goes through or it doesn't. The suppression of energy outside this frequency band from 300 to 3300 Hz is implemented with simple electrical circuits called filters. There's both a filter in the telephone and a filter in the CO switch. For our purposes, the term bandwidth means capacity. In the analog world, capacity is measured literally by the width of the available frequency band. In this case, the width of this frequency band is 3300 minus 300, or 3000 hertz wide, and of course we use kilos, an abbreviation for thousands, so that's 3 kilohertz wide for short. This 3 kilohertz bandwidth is the capacity provided for ordinary telephone service. Why does the voice band stop at 3300 hertz? The wires that make up the loop are capable of supporting electricity vibrating more often than 3300 times a second. In fact, DSL technologies require electricity vibrating at frequencies measured in the millions of times per second. The user's ears and brains are capable of detecting sound pressure waves vibrating more often than 3300 times a second. The human hearing range is traditionally thought to extend up to 20,000 hertz. So why would the capacity a user is allowed to employ purposely limited to 3 kilohertz, even though the wires are capable of more than that, and the users are capable of more than that? The answer is, as usual, money. The more capacity a user is allowed to employ on the access circuit, the loop, the more capacity and hence money is required to transmit the information long distance. This narrow voice band frequency range was chosen based on studying people's ears, throats, and brains to determine the minimum capacity necessary to meet the requirements. Returning to the question of trees falling in the forest, the sound pressure waves at the far end are not reproduced exactly the same as they were at the near end. In fact, they're quite muffled and distorted, missing most of the higher frequencies. I'll repeat that sentence, this time with a voice band filter applied, passing only the frequencies between 300 and 3300 Hz. 
I'll repeat that sentence, this time with a voice band filter applied, passing only the frequencies between 300 and 3300 Hz. The sound is reproduced just well enough so that the listener can recognize the speaker and understand what the speaker is saying, thus meeting the requirement to communicate information using speech and hearing. We're interested in transmitting the minimum required to meet that objective since there's a direct relationship between the capacity a user can employ on the access circuit and the cost of transmitting their information long distance. It turns out that the voice band is not quite enough bandwidth to be able to understand everything the speaker is saying. In particular, it's difficult to tell the difference between S and F over a telephone. This is because the frequency of sound pressure wave that distinguishes S from F is above 3300 Hz, which is not transmitted over the phone system. Thus, one has to say S is in Sierra and F is in Foxtrot. I'll repeat that with a voice band filter applied. This is because the frequency of sound pressure wave that distinguishes S from F is above 3300 Hz, which is not transmitted over the phone system. Thus, one has to say S is in Sierra and F is in Foxtrot. Of course, one could always say things like S is in C, A is in R, and E is in I to liven things up, and if that doesn't get the listener confused, there's always E as in U. The chart on the right shows an alternate phonetic alphabet to be used when you want to confuse people. In this lesson, we've examined the capacity provided with plain ordinary telephone service, which is the frequency band from 300 to 3300 Hz, known as the voice band. We understood why it's possible to restrict the capacity, the question of reproducing sound versus reproducing thoughts in a person's brain, why the capacity is restricted to reduce transmission costs, how the capacity is restricted, filters in the telephone and the line card on the CO switch, limitations of the voice band, particularly with the sounds S and F. Next are a couple of informal quiz questions to be sure you did not miss any key points, then a quiz results screen.